In today's Madden 21 video, we're going to be breaking down some blitzes, but even deeper than the blitzes, we're going to be breaking down how to actually use row coverage and different coverage schemes to make your blitz so much more effective, especially with thinking through what are they probably going to do, what routes are going to have the time to get open, and what routes are you're going to need to defend. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. We've been in a little bit of a series today on defense, so we're getting a lot of questions on that. Now, if you're brand new to the channel, what we do is we upload Madden 21 offensive and defensive tips every single day on our YouTube channel at 2 o'clock, at 4 o'clock, at 6 o'clock, and at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. We also live stream every night at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. So we bring you a ton of tips and a ton of concepts. Um, that you can use to be very, very effective in Madden NFL 21. So if that's something that interests you, I encourage you to go ahead and click the subscribe button. Also, if you want a few extra perks of the channel, you can hit the join button. That'll give you some really cool things um, if you come by the stream or in the chat and different things like that. All right, guys. So I've been getting a lot of questions about defense, and I want to talk about this. We've been talking about Big Nickel over G today, and I want to specifically talk about um, how do you actually use zone blitzing? Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go over a couple different zone blitzing schemes that you can use. So we're, first and foremost, we're going to use the weak uh, WS Blitz 3, WS Blitz 2. We're then going to use SS Blitz, um, SS Blitz 3, which if I can find the SS Blitz 2 and SS Blitz uh, 3, if I can find that. And then as we said in the video prior, the base play we're going to be using is the pinch blitz, okay? So these are the blitzes that we're going to discuss uh, today. And then the other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to go through, and in your coaching adjustments, make sure you have auto flip on. Make sure you have auto alignment to base align. We talked about the importance of alignment in a previous video that we did on this. Um, if you have missed any of the big Nickel over G videos, we have over two hours of breakdowns on this defense right now on our YouTube channel. So if you want to get access to that video, all you have to do is just shoot me a text message. My number is 812-216-3644. It's also in the description and in the top left corner of your screen. All right, so I, we've talked a lot about blitzes on my channel. We've pretty much posted majority of the effective blitzes that you see ran uh, today. We've talked about nickel 55 odd. We've talked about big nickel over G. We've talked about 55, 55 wide, user rushes, all that fun stuff. So if you want access to that, just whatever formation you want to know how to blitz from, just shoot me a text and I can I can give you the setup. Um, but what I wanted to do today is I want to talk specifically about what do you actually do beyond the blitz. So beyond the blitz, obviously you want to get pressure. But what do you do once you get the pressure? What do you do with the coverage? Because if you're not careful, you see, you'll watch right here. I can run whatever blitz I want. If I can't cover out of it, it's a touchdown. And that doesn't do any good for anybody. And, um, you know, you know that's what we're trying to do with the series today. Go a little bit beyond just the blitz and try to talk about the complete defense behind it. And so one of the things that we've been talking about specifically is, is, is understanding alignment and understanding that um, having a base alignment where you're something like this right here is a really, really good alignment because it gives you balance against a lot of different sets. This slot corner can get out on anything on the left side. You have a corner on the back side here that can do a lot of damage as well. So this is all in all a decent style of alignment. If they run the ball, uh, you have this user right over the A gap, as you can see right here, uh, as a kind of a general rule. And then really what we're using is we're using this backside defensive end as a man coverage assignment on a back if he goes out and releases. And then maybe we do something like this. This is essentially a cover one style of blitz. Now, what's nice about something like this is you know that pretty much the only thing that they can do is run some type of corner route or slant route. Those are the two primary things that are going to go. But so you run something like this at the right time, you can get pretty good pressure from the big nickel over G. And uh, and what you'll see is you'll get you'll get pretty good pressure, but everything's going to be kind of covered. The important thing to understand is number one, you don't want to blitz all the time, and number two. You have to understand what is open when you blitz, right? When you blitz, you leave yourself vulnerable because you're adding a plus one, right? Oftentimes in the NFL and in real life, people have to blitz five to six people to be able to get pressure in Madden. Sometimes you can get away with one blitzing one or two, but even if you just blitz one or two, um, it does leave you vulnerable to certain things, right? It, it really, truly does. 
So uh, we just want to understand kind of what those things are and really try to take uh, steps to be able to be effective against that. So if I did something like this where I pinch my line, crash it out, what you'll notice here is on this left side, as long as I user this guy uh, right in this little pocket right here and go up and get the, and go up and um, kind of make myself known to the offense, you'll see we're going to get some we'll see we'll, you will typically get some pressure on that left edge. Now, the same thing is true on the back side. So let's say that I did something like this, right? Um, I did the same pressure, but instead I swung, or, or I'm sorry, I dropped. Oops, I don't know why he's staying out there, but I dropped this left side corner. So I dropped that left side corner in a zone, and then I go with this kind of this kind of look right here. you know. And now what we're going to be trying to do is bring, bringing that slot on the right side. And what you'll see here is you're going to get some kind of pressure off that side. So... You have two different types of edge pressures that you can run from this. You can run the, the five man on that side, and then you can obviously run the five man on the other side. Another thing that you could do is you could run something like this, where essentially you're, you're blitzing your user right down the A gap, and it's a user rush. It's a very simple user rush. Effectively, we're blitzing six people, and if they send five out, you're going to have uh, the capability of getting home. And then obviously one other thing that you can do from this is you can take this guy on the right here and if i'm running a user rush i can bring him off the edge and get pretty good pressure with that as well so there's several different ways that you can get pressure from this formation but what i want to spend the rest of the video talking about is what do you actually do with the coverage and how do you make the coverage very impactful and powerful and useful against certain types of defense so let's talk about trips tight end now if i want to blitz trips tight end it's going to be it's going to be a challenge but what I like to do as far as um, blitzing trip tight end goes is I like to, as a general rule, and when I say general, this is kind of a base three deep, three under blitz, meaning I want three people in the deep coverage and I want three people underneath. That's kind of the general um, you know, strategy with that. So we're going to set up our blitz. We're going to pitch our line. We're going to crash them out. And then we've obviously showed blitz here, and we have this little blitz angle right here. Now we know that we want to use her, this guy. We want to use her savage. And typically what we want to do with him is we're going to want to jump, you know, pretty much anything that's up into this seam. That's a very natural transition. So what we want to do is we want to go down, right, and up to jump any corner routes or anything like that. So what we don't want to worry about is we don't want to worry about any kind of flat coverage on that right side. So what we'll do is we'll either put this, we'll put this corner in either a soft squat or a cloud flat or a hard flat. It's kind of up to you what you want to do. If you want to be really aggressive, you put him in a soft or a hard flat. If you don't want to be really aggressive, then obviously you can just leave him in you know, a soft squat. But what you'll see is now we have a three rack over on this side, and then we have these two, two defenders right here. So what I like to do from this is what you'll see I do is we will literally just man these guys up. Now, if they run flat to the left, I'm going to say, okay, they got it. What you'll notice here, if they run a flat, um, let me just show you a play. Let's say they run X spot, right? This has a flat to the left side. Watch this middle linebacker um, on the field. You'll see he's going to take the flat. Do you notice that? Because he's on a three-rack hook. And what a three-rack hook does is it opens up to the trip side, and basically he's going to take that slot player um, if he goes underneath. So if the, if the slot – if the slot – route goes underneath if it goes on a drag if it goes on an in route if he goes on a five yard out route if he goes on a hitch route it doesn't matter what inside releasing route he goes on because of the rules of the ss blitz three the coverage is so simple or i'm sorry not the ss blitz three, the, the ws blitz three but what you'll see here is this is really the look that you're going to get and so what we could easily do once we set up our pressure is we could do something just like this right here and we can still have a safety over the top in that cover three alignment. So they say anybody goes deep, we have good coverage on that left side. And now all we really have to worry about is this tight end corner route. As long as the tight end doesn't kill us over the middle, um, we're gonna be sitting pretty. I'm gonna show you a very popular setup for this formation uh, and this offense. And it's basically this uh, right here. You're gonna see something like this. This is a very popular setup. And then they're just gonna motion Mike Evans cross. And what I want you to do is I want you to just watch kind of what happens. And the only player we're going to guard is the tight end. The tight end goes vertical. We're going to stay vertical. And then we're going to come back onto this crossing route. And obviously we're going to get the pressure. But what I want to show you in this replay 
is I want to show you the covers. This is an example of a roll cover. This is an example of understanding the tendencies of a trip set and understanding exactly what they're going to do. So what you'll see here is this hard fly on the right side is going to take that running back. Now you notice that this three wreck, because there's no underneath route from that slot on the left side, and because we've turned this into a two by two formation, this is another thing that's really important to understand. If this was a three by one, meaning if it was trips to the left, then that linebacker would take the slot inside slot on the left side. But now the strength of the formation is completely shifted. The strength of the formation is now on the right side. As you see, there is one, two, three receivers on the right side and two receivers on the left side. What that basically means as far as easy math goes is that linebacker is now telling himself, okay, the strong side is on this right side, and what I've got to do is I've got to watch this tailback right here. If the tailback goes out on a route, I've got him in man-to-man -man coverage. And so what you'll notice is that's exactly what happened. As you see, he's going to come out and open up into the tailback side, and essentially what he's doing is he's reading between these two. As you can see, he basically takes these two things away. There's nothing they can do on the right side. There's no throw. There's really not any throw on the right side of the field. Now, obviously, we talked about the importance in the last video of cross-manning and understanding that when you man up, most of the time when people motion, when they motion receivers to the right or to the left, what they're doing is they're typically going to have them on some type of in-breaking pattern, whether it be a crossing route or a slant route. And so when you man them up in zone coverage, the man assignments don't flip. They stay exactly the same. So what you're going to see here is this left side corner on this side right here, he is going to beeline it over and take away the slant route. Watch what's going to happen. Snap the ball. He's a man coverage on Mike Evans. He's going to take this away. You can't throw that slant route. I mean, it's a very tight window, and more than likely, you're not going to throw it, right? More than likely, you're not going to throw it. Now, we have this left side guy because of the because of how many times I'm telling – I can't tell you how many times I've seen this left side slot just kill me. Uh, Chris Godwin, whether it be on a corner route or, or a curl, uh, a post route, something, right? Well, now I've got inside leverage on this guy. So if he runs on a zig, I've got him. If he runs on a post, I've got him. If he runs on a corner, I've got him. We've taken that whole left side away with just a couple man-to-man -man coverage assignments. And now what's going to happen is, because at this time, as you see, the pressure is coming through. We get a nice little disengage at the A-gap, right? And what you're seeing here is I know that my job is if that tight end goes vertical, I've got to, I've got to take that throw away. So there's nowhere to throw this ball. As you can see, the crossing of the man is confusing. We're able to get the pressure. The one thing I'm taking away is this crossing route over the top. As you can see, I'm taking that away with my user. I can basically take the streak and the crossing route away as long as I can get good pressure. Hopefully that makes sense. But that is a three deep three under blitz that is very, very effective against a very, very, very powerful setup of a play out of trip side end. Now what I want to do is I want to show you that same setup, but I want to show it to you against what I would call a constraint theory play. And a constraint theory play essentially means something the offense is going to call once you start to overcommit. Okay, And so what we're going to do is we're going to call verticals, and we're just going to put the running back on a wheel route. That's all we're going to do. They're not. We're not going to adjust anything else. And I just want to show you the same exact setup. We're not going to do anything different on the defensive side of the ball than we did on the last play. Um, we're still going to send our pressure. Uh, as you can see, we're going to line up right over the center, and then we're still going to drop our, our safety and coverage here on this right side uh, into a hard flat. We're still going to drop those two guys on the left side into man assignments. We're still going to have this guy in the middle of the field. We really want him to be down in this pocket. That's why sometimes you have to base a line a couple times uh, just to get them to go to the right spots. But really where you want him is to be right there. Um, but anyway, essentially this is the look that you're going to have. Now remember, at the snap of the ball, I am not thinking about circle. I can't. I cannot afford to do that. I know that I have a deep third, and I know I have a three rec hook. So if circle runs a corner route, that three rec should go play the corner route. If he runs a vertical route, the three rec should take him in man-to-man -man coverage and run up the seam. Let's take a look at how this works. And what you'll see is that three rec's got to hold on him just long enough for me to get back over the top of it, and we're going to get some pressure. So what I want to do now is I want to come back into instant replay and show you how what we've done is we've disguised our coverages because up to this point, we've been running coverage. We've been running cover two, cover three, cover four, uh, match coverage, man coverage, cross man coverage. We, we haven't been blitzing a ton, right? At least not yet. And now what I want to show you is what happens when we do. So as you notice here, this slot goes vertical. Number 10 is going on a vertical route. That, because it's, and again, last time he opened the, the three rec defended the right side. This time he's defending the trip side. The reason why 
is because that the that three wreck is going to open up. He's going to defend the side that is the strongest passing threat. In this situation, it's the trip side. If this if that if if any one of those receivers on the left had motion to the right, then he would have done the same thing he did on the last play because now the strength would flip from left to right. Does that hopefully that makes sense? So what you're going to see now is in a trips tight end type of look, he's going to open up. Now, because he's a three rack hook, three rack hooks typically want to play underneath. They don't generally want to play um, over top. They're not going to take a man to man and run with them for 50 yards. Unlikely. What they're going to do is they're going to take crossing routes underneath stuff. That's what that's designed to stop. So what you'll see here on the left side is you've got a safety in the middle of the field. There's no window to throw these vertical routes on the left side, especially if you shade a coverage over top. There's nothing that you can hit on this left side. Now what you're seeing is this window to throw the slot is kind of there. If you lob it to the right, my money is that that middle safety would come or I would be able to get back with my user. And what you'll see here is we have that hard flat dropping in the flat. So if they throw that quick flat to the back, they're going to make a tackle. And essentially what we're doing at this point right here is we are going to bail off of the tight end and go back and take this guy at this window right here. If you have enough time, and again, I'm sending five people. And so I'm counting on my five people to get home against five-man blockers. We weren't able to do that on that time. I didn't really set the blitz up all the way. But what you'll notice is you could hit that tight end right at that point. So I've got to do a really good job of taking that away. And as you see, the three-wreck three, hit, three wreck at that point is now guarding nobody. Okay? So just understand that if they run a vertical play, you're basically betting that you're going to be able to get the pressure home sooner than they're going to be able to get the ball out. Okay, and I want to show you the same setup, but I want to show you I want to everything to be the same, but I want to show you one different one little nuance um, to this to this play that you can add into your uh, arsenal. So it's the same basic blitz, um, but the only thing we're going to different is we're going to put a soft squad out there instead of a hard flat. That's the only thing that we're going to change. Uh, we're going to pinch our line so that they come down in a good position to play some ball. I don't like that this guy's doing this. I want him over here. Uh, but anyway, we're going to send this pressure, and of course, we want to get these guys uh, manned up on their so on their slots. Now, what you'll see is we're sending that five man pressure off the right side. We're running the verticals play. Everything is the same, and my lurk is the same. I know that I'm going down, and then I'm going to the tight end. I know that's my responsibility. The tight end goes on a route. That's where I'm going. Tight end goes out on a route, and then I see that, and I bail. Now, what I want to do is I want to break this down in instant replay, and I just want to talk through what you just saw on the field. And obviously the pressure was a little bit better that time. I still think that pressure will come in a little bit more consistently um, if we do a couple of things. Maybe we stay down on our lurk a little bit more, a little bit closer. If we started a little closer to the line of scrimmage, it probably would have fixed that. What you'll notice here is we're sending that heavy pressure off that right side. Now you'll see here, this, this running back, you can throw that route and take your yards. Um, you can throw that route and take your yards. But now we have a lot better coverage up over the top. Um, and we're able to really run with some thing, run with some routes. Now, one thing I do want to point out, um, and, the, and the primary reason why we're putting that um, that left side um, safety in a middle third is primarily because of post routes that they could run to that left side receiver, right? So we need the cross man so we can get the slant, but at the same time we need the the, the, the deep middle third so we can get any post routes that are going to come over our way. So that's primarily why we're doing that. So that's verticals and that's PA counter go from that look. Now what I want to do is show you the flipped version, which is SS Blitz 3. Um, as you can see here, this is a lot different. And this coverage is, I love this coverage personally. Um, the reason why is because it's what I call a roll coverage. This is going to trick a lot of people. But you have to be really careful with this. And I'm telling you that um, because if you're not really careful with this coverage, you can get absolutely burned. Um, but I really like this coverage against a lot of what Trips Tight End is wanting to do. And so what we're going to do uh, on, this, on, this, on this play is we're going to set up our blitz. So we're going to pinch our line, crash it out. Obviously, we're going to show blitz to get that guy in. And then we're going to keep it contained. As you see, this is going to set up the base pressure off of this edge. Now, what you could do is you could try to bluff blitz this guy if you wanted to um, and get him to go out. I would just recommend just keeping your five-man pressure. So I want to show three deep, three under coverage primarily. Now, what we're going to do is, as a general rule, we like to use are this guy. Okay, so that's going to mean we're going to take away our purple defender on the right side. 
but what you'll notice on this is now we're going to have a little bit more heavy coverage on the left side because we're going to come under everything that's going on. So essentially what we're going to do is we're actually going to play a cloud coverage. And what that looks like is we're going to take that left side safety, we're going to put him in a deep half zone, we're going to take the left side corner, and he is now going to go into a cloud flat zone. Now this is a lot better, in my opinion, against um, certain types of routes that they're going to run. Basically anything left side. Um, this cloud flat's going to do a really good job. The three wreck's going to open up really nicely to anything underneath. So let's say, for example, they run something like um, X. Whoops, I'm sorry. Uh, I got off of my uh, got off of my user here, or I accidentally hit, hit hit hike. But let me show you. Like, let's say that they're running some type of flood uh, to the left side, right? This is very common out of trips. You might see something like this right here. Simple flood to the left with maybe something like this on the back side. Okay, very, very simple concept. But what you'll notice um, in terms of how this coverage is going to play is now we've done it, we've, again, we've done this roll concept. And what I like to do is take that backside guy, put him on a deep half. And essentially what this is, is this is cloud coverage with a three rack on the left side. And essentially I'm taking away the right side on my user. Now what I like to do, because I'm facing so much trips tight, if, if I'm facing trips tight in, this guy on the left side, he's going into a soft squat. Because let's say they bring somebody over on a streak. If they bring somebody over on a streak, that soft squat's going to follow him. If they don't bring somebody over on a streak, um, then you're still you're going to play basically you know the standard principles. But what you'll see now is you've created essentially a cover two inverted style of pressure with a three rack on the field. So let's say they go to that flood concept. What you'll see is that opens up to the flat, and then that cloud flat. It's going to be a tight window to hit the corner route. I'm just telling you, it's going to be a tight window to hit the corner route. Um, and so you could do something like that. So that's another example of a, of a rolled coverage. You're rolling it to one side. Um, you could also do that out of, let's say, SS Blitz 2. Uh, or No, I'm sorry, not SS Blitz 2. I'm sorry, WS Blitz 2. Yep, WS Blitz 2. Uh, this play has a really, really significant roll of a coverage to the left side. You notice that this safety... Um, and really what you want to do, and, and then I can't stress this enough, if you're going to do this one, you really need to keep these guys down. You don't want them to move back. If they move back, it's bad. If they move back, it's bad because it's an automatic tell. So what you want is you want it to look just like this, right? On that left side, you see that you've got, you've got basic coverage there on that left side. The only thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take that middle linebacker on the left side, and he's going into a, um, he's going into a deep middle zone. And then from that point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this coverage. And what that means is this safety in the middle is going to roll all the way back to the right. And so essentially, we're not going to have anybody deep on the right side. And the other thing is we're not really going to have anybody in the middle of the field. But this is going to have really, really good outside coverage. Let me just show you what they could do on this left side. If they throw a streak up the seam, you notice that that soft squat is going to go with it. So if they throw a streak up the seam, the soft squat's going with him in man coverage and is going to be able to take that away so now what you've done um, by by calling this play is you've still hedged your bet because you still have your safeties going where they need to go and doing what they need to do you just have got to make sure that these guys stay put if they go back it's just not going to be good i'm telling you right now it's not going to be good you've got to manually kind of hold them in their spots uh, for this thing to work so now you have this this front. This is the basic look that you've given the de the, the offense. Obviously, we want a user, the play side running back. So we're setting a cover two style blitz off the edge here. This has a little bit more, in my opinion, deep coverage uh, safety. Uh, but basically, you're sitting pressure, and you're going to try to just kind of come underneath. Everything in the middle of the field is yours. Everything in the middle of the field is yours underneath. You have everything underneath. Um, so that's SS Blitz 2. I don't think you're actually going to have a ton of people that are going to run like po or uh, corner routes against the blitz. I think what you're going to get a lot more of in this year's game is you're going to get a lot of flat routes against the blitz. You're going to get a lot of slant routes against this blitz, and you're going to get a lot of streak routes against this blitz. So that's where I enter something like um, something like this WS uh, blitz two. And what you'll notice is again, keep these guys down. But if you keep these guys down, another thing that you can do is you could run outside quarters on both sides. And then you can take that guy in the middle 
and basically if you if you um, you can do something with him you can put him on a you know vertical hook or something but this this right here could also be another look that you could throw at people right just something simple like this I really like this you know hard flat kind of stuff you're just taking away everything right here in that little pocket everything else you're coming underneath and taking as well so the wet, what I'm getting at here, and, and again, all this evolves up to ultimately a man pressure, right? A man pressure. Uh, when you send man pressure, in my opinion, the biggest thing you got to worry about is slants. Um, that's the biggest thing. Uh, you know, as long as you shade up, the biggest thing you got to worry about is slant routes. So when you send, go to send your man pressure from this, I would always send it opposite of the running back. So that I could be a man coverage on that running back, take that route away, and then if they run anything over here, I can go here, and then I can come back down here and basically lurk that lurk those two routes within one time. Because you gotta remember when you blitz, you're sending heavy pressure at your opponent, and you're basically putting the pressure on him to make him make fast decisions. You're wanting you're not wanting to stay on routes too long. If you stay on routes too long in the blitz, you're gonna get killed. Okay. But if you bounce from route to route to route to route really quickly and make sure that you're holding triangle as soon as that ball is thrown, you'll be surprised at how many how many routes you'll pick off. Okay? Now, what about like a, a you know, an all-out zone blitz? Typically, um, typically when I go all-out zone blitz, I'm going to go something like SS Blitz 3. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to play hard flats. You see I got hard flats on both sides here. And effectively, what's going to happen uh, with this is we're not going to play anybody deep, right? When I run this, I'm only going to play one guy in the middle of the field. So what that means is I am literally going to take these outside safeties, and more than likely, they're going to go into some kind of um, uh, soft squat, potentially. Um, potentially a soft squat. Occasionally, they'll go into a deep half. Most of the time, they're going into soft squat zones. Most of the time. And the reason why is because what I know now is on this left hand side, if I've you know, if I've got something because of this roll coverage right here, let's say they run verticals to the left side, I know at the snap of the ball that's where I'm going. I'm going on a B line right out there. Right? So my key's a little bit different. I still send the same pressure, but now we're playing really underneath coverage because of what we've done. Now let's say um, real quick within this. Uh, let's get we're going to WS uh, WS Blitz three. We're gonna play hard flats, um, but we want to send both of them. We want to send both these guys off the edge. When I in a situation like this, typically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this backside safety. He's going in a hard flat. It's gonna be very very confusing, but effectively we're gonna go cover two invert, and I've got two hard flats. And basically with my user, I'm gonna take away that right side of the field vertically. And we're going to give up anything over the middle. We're going to be okay if they take something over the middle. Now, I know that that's open, right? So I may go here. And if I see, oh, crap, they're in verticals, I got to bail. I got to bail right now, right? But those are some principles for blitzing that I think will help. Um, those are some principles that have helped me a ton. Um, and those are some principles that you can blitz. But now you've got really, really good coverage behind the blitz, and you've completed the entire play. So if you want more on defense, you can pick up my ebook. My my full guide is in the description of this video. It has everything in the 4-6 playbook. Um, also, if you want to pick up uh, more about this, specifically Big Nickel Over G, I've got a whole guide on that for my text message members. You can text me. My number is 812-216-3644, and we could talk Big Nickel Over G for hours. This is one of the best defenses in Madden this year, if not the best defense. And we have an over two-hour breakdown that I'd like to give you completely for free just by texting me. My number is 812-216-3644. All right, guys, we will see you guys uh, in our next video here in a few hours. I think it's going to go live at 8 o'clock, and we'll also be running this defense tonight live on stream uh, at, at, uh, at my YouTube channel. So make sure that you're in the Discord so you know whenever we go live. If you haven't joined the Discord yet, there's a link in the description. We'll see you guys tonight.